Welcome to Imperfect in an Uncertain World, resources to help you navigate your life with authenticity and purpose. We're all imperfect and the world is uncertain. So today, one of the things that I want to talk to you about is engaging one another. Have you ever had difficulties with someone, you love them, but you kept hitting a barrier of core values, that maybe there was something that just kind of stopped you from deepening your relationship, or you found yourself drawing just apart from that person. You and the other person just didn't believe in the same things. Um, And I think in the world that we're in now, I know that the world that we're in now, this is happening more and more often because people are no longer afraid to speak their mind, to share who they are, Um, at the core of their being. And that's really uncomfortable because what I've discovered is, is that my core values are very different from people that I love. So I had to ask myself, what does it mean to be in relationship with someone without judging them or defending where I am? And do I need to shift that relationship um, and the way that I engage that other person? So what I would say is, if you're like me, you've lost too many relationships in the abyss of opposing values. Um, You may have not said anything until you just exploded because you couldn't agree with what they were saying. You might be afraid to leap across that abyss for fear that you will plunge into it Um, And say something or do something that you'll regret later. So the question that I would ask you is how do you relate to someone with whom you have opposing values? So what I would say is it begins with you. Begin what with an understanding of really what's causing the discord or the unsettling feelings in you. It's about reflection and introspection. And I have to tell you, I'm really big on reflection and introspection. I'm really big on spending time in silence, getting to know what's going on in the ground of your being with yourself, and then moving into the logical part of who you are and really beginning to put together patterns and beginning to figure out what everything is going on. So let's talk about reflection or how do you reflect? So what I would say to you is, is what are your core values? Always begin with you. What are your core values? What do you believe? And if you don't want to go global, think about a certain situation. Um, And maybe what you might think to yourself is, what's the situation that I'm having difficulty with this person? And so um, it could be political, it could be religious, it could be a number of different ways. So it's important that you begin to understand where you stand. The next thing is, and this is the tricky part, and you may know because this person may flat out tell you what their core values are. Uh, You may get a glimpse of their core, core values depending upon what they said. So if you're not really quite sure what their core values are, what I want you to do is to ask yourself, how do the how do these this person's comments really make me feel? You know, uh, physically, how do I feel? What happens with my mind whenever? What are the things that 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 uh, come out of my mind? What things come out of my mouth? Um, what is being triggered in me? And spend some time reflecting on that. The goal is is not to blame or shame or feel bad or think that person is a bad person. It's you gather as much information as you can without judging the other person or defending how you feel. You've got to be objective, and that's tough. You've got to have that role of the objective observer and go into it where you're willing to look at your emotions look at your core values and not say, ha, 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 I'm right. And look at the other person's core values and say they're wrong. You've got to get to an understanding of why you believe what you believe and get an understanding of what you believe the other person believes. Because you're both operating from two separate socially constructed realities. So even after you do this, I would recommend if possible, you talk with the person to see if you're really understanding 
where they're at and to learn how they reached the conclusion and the values that they believe. Use all of your senses to describe how you feel. So now you've got this tidy bunch of information and we're going to take that and we're going to move from our heart, which is the home of the reflection, into our mind, which is the home of introspection. So you're going to pull all this information up into your head. You get to be analytical about it. And you ask yourself, do you see or do I see any patterns in my relationship, how I'm relating this person to maybe you relate to other people in the same way um, and the core values may appear very different. Ask yourself, what is being triggered in me? Why am I being triggered by what this person says or what this person does? Now, the next question is very important. Ask yourself, can I talk with the other one without either of us becoming reactionary? And if you don't think that's possible, ask yourself, is there something that I can do to talk with this other person to minimize my reaction to them? Because sometimes even if someone is reacting out of what you're saying, if you're able to stay calm, you can diffuse the situation. Now, you don't have to have a discussion with the other person. You can answer yes or no to these questions. And if you feel like, if you feel too uncomfortable or if you don't feel safe having this discussion, then I wouldn't recommend that you have the discussion. This is more about you beginning to understand where your values are and how those values may be preventing you from relating with responding to the other person and not reacting from your triggers. So the next thing that you can do is, is really name the roots. And if you're not sure where the roots of your discomfort or your reactionary behavior is coming from, then state your desire to name the roots of what is unbalancing you, you know, and, and then come up with strategies to grow beyond your confusion and connect with the person in non-reactionary ways. And that might take time and effort. It might be three, four, five, six, ten times that you meet with this person before you can stop reacting and begin to responding. So the next thing that you do is, is you take what you've learned in reflection and introspection, uh, what you've processed, and what you've decided that you're going to do and integrate that into your life. And what you might find is, is that you're just not integrating it in your relationship with this other, with the one person. You may find that these strategies work with other people in your life. And it might help you remain calm in the face of other situations. It may help you be less reactionary and more responsive. And so, so the goal is, is for you to really begin to understand what your core values are and how you can relate out of those in loving, gentle, compassionate, nonviolent ways. So it's a way of discovering where your imperfections are and how those imperfections can teach you to be a more responsive, more compassionate person. So recognize that probably one of four things will happen when you begin to talk with this other person. You may find the best case scenario is, is you may find a way to bridge your differences and respect one another. You may, the second way is, is you may continue the relationship at is and studiously at all costs avoid the conflict or the controversial subjects. You may decide to shift the relationship, which is the third thing, so instead of being close friends, you may shift to something that's a little less intimate. You may become acquaintances. If it was a very, very close family member, you may just shift away and you might not share as deeply as you had been sharing. Or the fourth thing, and I think the, is, is the most drastic thing, is that you just might say goodbye to the relationship lovingly and gently because that's the best thing for the two of you involved. Now, 
in the past, I can tell you is, is that I have said goodbye to relationships and some of the relationships never come back. Others of them come back in different ways. Some of them over time become stronger and then others of them shift into more of an acquaintanceship. And I will say to you is that there's no right or wrong way of doing that. What it is, is you do what feels best for you and how you can live. What, what is the best, most self-compassionate thing that you can do for you? So what I will say to you is, is that there really is no right or wrong answer. The response that you decide on is the one that's best for you and ultimately then best for the other person in the relationship. I would encourage you if you want to learn more about relationships or what I call contemplative relationships is read my book, A Constellation of Connections, Contemplative Relationships. Information is available at wildefirepress.com, which is www.wildefyr.com. Or if you um, go, to the, go to Amazon and type in Vanessa F. Hurst, my page will come up and you can purchase it online. Uh, I would also say to you that if you're really ready, if you feel like you're stuck, and you want to engage in some intuitive coaching using the neurosynchrony process, I am also available for that. Message me and we can, um, we can schedule a session or two about that. Um, so again, I want to thank you for watching this video. Like it, share it with your friends. But most importantly, I would like for you to really be aware of how your triggers are catching you in reactions really what your core values are and how you can relate to other people so that outcome is how can you be the best, most compassionate person that you are. Have a terrific day.